Um, but what I'm going to do today is give you um, an overview of a project that we did this year with our year one students. Um, I'm just going to start by giving you a quick kind of overview of what the higher education system is looking like in Wales, because as I've gone to um, different sessions during the course of this conference, there are overlaps with systems in Canada and, and the US, but there are also some kind of uh, divergences as well. So I think it's quite important for me to just clarify out what systems we have so that it's clear to you uh, what I'm talking about. I think that's probably a good baseline to start from. Um, the University of Wales and Newport is a relatively small university, um, and it's a very community-focused university. There's a big drive in Wales and the UK at the moment to widen participation and get people returning to learning. Um, there's a lot of uh, time and effort spent in getting particularly, um, perhaps, uh, ladies that have had their families and are then looking to return into the workforce to get uh, trained to get degrees so that they can um, re-enter the workforce. Also students that traditionally haven't entered higher education, so ch uh, children, students from um, poor socioeconomic um, backgrounds, um, students that haven't got perhaps traditional uh, entry level qualifications, but getting some kind of access for all those students to come on degree programmes. Um, Alongside that, we've got the traditional students that go to secondary school, they get their A-levels, uh, they get their points from their A-levels, and then they come into a, a degree course. And so increasingly, at the beginning of term, you've got quite a, a mix of, of backgrounds coming into, um, into the class. Um, and that's particularly the case in our university. As I said, it's, it's a very small university. We get um, the, the area around is um, very diverse. There's lots of multicultural students. There's some... Um, quite significant areas of socio-economic deprivation and a lot of work has gone on to, to do that. Um, what triggered this project that I'm going to speak to you about today? Um, for, I'm relatively new to higher education, so four years ago I was working in the nursery as a nursery teacher. I'm still trying to get an assessment whereby I can get students to stick some pasta on a piece of paper and submit that. <laughs> I'm happy with that. This word thing, it's just what it's about. Um, so four years ago I was working in nursery and then I've started um, um, in the School of Education uh, here at University of Wales Newport, uh, initially working on the Bachelor of Education, uh, Early Years Education degree. And then last year, um, that course was revalidated and redesigned. And the way that the programme looks now, there are four degree um, pathways under the umbrella of the BA education. So there's straightforward education, early years education, inclusive education, and education studies. They're, they're four um, separate degrees that you can get awards for. And the way that the course is organised, there are some shared modules that every student will attend, and then there are some specific modules that relate directly to those different courses. And this was quite new. Uh, previously, we only had three pathways, and all the students did the same modules. And I was um, asked to, to lead and oversee this, this kind of new approach. And I was really conscious um, of two things really. The first was that there was a new pathway. Education studies as a pathway was brand new. Traditionally those new pathways don't recruit very strongly at the beginning and I was conscious of having a very small student cohort that could become fractured from some of the more established pathways. So for example early years everyone knew what that was. You know if you like colouring in and you're good with tissues your early years that's fine. Um, education studies ha didn't have an identity yet. I really didn't want it to be come an us and them situation where you know, all the early years people were doing one thing and the two education studies people were doing something else. Alongside that, there's a lot of literature coming out at that point in time about um, how to maximise student engagement, how to keep the students um, that, that we got. And this had particular relevance, as I said, to the, to the cohort that we attracted. Hi. Um, so... Um, one of the things that, I'd, that kind of struck me when I came into higher education, working in a nursery, you soon learn that you know, the one thing that children are really good at is being children, and I assumed that would happen in university, the one thing students would be really good at was being students, and that didn't really um, happen as smoothly as perhaps I thought it was. So it made me reflect back and think, okay, I need to have a look here and see um, what I can do, um, but also be aware that it's not just about me. I need to be able to, to foster some... Um, some new skills and, and awaken some things in students too. So um, being, a, um, being an, an educationalist, I first of all looked at some literature and I also spoke to my students. Um, there was a report that came out 
and oh, hang on, let's go to the next one. The first report that came out that we were all kind of issued with, the Higher Education Academy is a big driver in our um, institution, was this uh, report about the factors that influence student withdrawal. Um, and so that was my starting point. Um, and then looking through these, there were some things that I felt they're a little bit beyond my control. There's a limit to how much I can affect some of these. Um, I can send you these things, if, you know, if you get some that email at the end, I can, I can pass them on to you. Um, so, for example, like things with finance and employment, there's a real limit to how much I could impact upon that. Um, however, the majority of them were ones that I felt, that, that's my job not to give students a poor quality learning experience. And if they're not coping with the academic demands, I've got a role to play in that as well. It's not solely down to me, but I can't kind of just say, oh, those factors, yeah, okay, they're happening, get on with it kind of, uh, kind of thing. Um, so as a team, we thought, well, well, we'll look at these, see what things we could do to try and minimize the potential influence that they will have on our new, on our new cohort. Um, thinking back to these ideas of getting a student identity, getting students um, engaged at the start. Yes, uh, may I ask you, what is this dissatisfied with inti institutional resources? Would that be the, the library or the athletics? Yes, yeah, the kind of nuts and bolts of, of um, the resources that they can access. So and again, that was one that um, I'd like to be able to influence more, but that was one that we felt um, we had a limited amount of um, <coughs> opportunity to, to, to influence that at the time. We did see that as a potential, um, um, one potential way of addressing that was at the end of the year, getting students to reflect back on what could have been done better and having their evidence that if that had impacted, we could then go on to other and, and students specifically dissociated the resources from environment and location, right? Because you, you could, I mean, some of it could be part of the environment and could yeah, not. Yeah, These, th that one, the data that they had about that one tended to be students that had come to clearing, do you have clearing? Um, so when, stu when um, students um, apply for courses, they come for an interview and you give them an offer of a place provided they get their A-level results. And then if your course isn't full, you go into the system called clearing where they can ring up and say, I've got so many points, I'm, I'm sure there's an equivalent. There's, there's um, an equivalent, that's good. Yeah, um, and so that tended to be students that had come through the clearing process <laughs> and hadn't been to the campus before, they might not have come to the area before, so that was more kind of the geographic right. environment and location, and then this was much more specifically things that the, that the university itself could address. Thank you. Yeah, is that helpful? Yeah. Yes. Um, so we had these in our mind. We also um, spoke to our previous students, the, the previous cohort, and said, look, um, well, we're aware that we've got um, these new students coming in. Can you reflect back out on, on the first year? You know, what was good, what was not so good for you? what matched our expectations, what didn't match our expectations. Um, and the kind of thing that they came back with, and bear in mind these were the students that had stayed, so you know, there's the, some students that would, might have um, gone early in the days, they wouldn't necessarily wouldn't have that information. But they said they were really keen, at the very start, they were really keen to be students, to come in and study something. Um, and that it hadn't perhaps happened as fast as they would have liked. Um, which made us start to think, okay, um, there's something we can change here, we can do something a bit differently. So moving on from that, we then decided to, this is the last slide as well, so I'm going to get to, um, oh sorry, that one. We, we went back to, I mean, it's an old, old piece of work, and I know people are very familiar with it, and it's been revised and, and revisited a lot, but for simplicity, we just went back to this original piece of work and thought, okay, what can we do with our practice to focus on the, these principles of good undergraduate teaching, kind of going back to the drawing board, really, and thinking of those things that perhaps we'd forgotten about. Um, and so at the end of that process of looking through this literature, speaking with the students, we started to think about making the course more academic, more studious, right from the very beginning.